Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Jay Calvert, and today here with my uh, faithful co-host, Dr. Millicent Ravello. How are you doing, Dr. Ravello? Easy I'm, for me to say. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We have a big topic to talk about today. We do. We have, well, I'll let you introduce it because it's sort of your deal. What are Why we doing? Is it my deal? <laughs> Cocaine nose is my deal? Well, it is my deal. I, just, I fixed it. You just gave away the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you meant like, because it's your deal. I'm like, that <laughs> is kinda, not my deal. You kind of know a lot about this. <laughs> no, Cocaine knows topic. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah, this is something that we definitely see a fair amount. Um, and it comes with a very specific subset of problems that require a very specific subset of treatment options. Um, and it's very real. It's, it's oh, not yeah. like this like super rare thing that happens. Like it happens. It's on the rise lately. Cocaine has made a huge comeback in the Los Angeles area anyway. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I mean, I'm seeing more people with this problem. You know, I think, I feel like like cocaine definitely had a moment in the 80s and then it never really went away and then it was like really popular for a long time like in the early 2000s especially probably bigger cities but definitely here in LA but I feel like the whole like fentanyl epidemic thing has kind of put a damper in the cocaine use yes because you just don't know what you're getting anymore so like people have less of an appetite for the street drugs because you don't know what's in them yeah I mean I've I've had some people say, oh, I was going to, you know, buy this or buy that, but I'm just worried about fentanyl. So I didn't do it. Totally. And I'm like, well, I don't buy drugs illegally, <laughs> so I don't really think about that. But I guess if I did, I would think you about would that. You would have to think about that. Yeah. And it's so silly because like, why would you put fentanyl and cocaine? Like they're opposite, like cocaine speeds you up, fentanyl brings you down. But people are putting fentanyl in everything. So you just can't trust what you're getting anymore. So maybe we'll see less of a cocaine nose thing, but maybe we're seeing more of it because cocaine noses take a while to build over time. So maybe everybody that was like super into it in the early 2000s is now experiencing the effects. So the reason this is a topic is because cocaine is a vasoconstrictive agent, which means that it clamps off blood vessels by the nature of its medical action. It basically gets the blood vessels to contract so much so that the blood doesn't flow through them. Right. That's part of its mechanism of action. And in general, when you're doing cocaine, you snort it through your nose. That's the main vehicle of entry into your body. So you're getting this huge hit of a vasoconstrictor inside of your nose. And what that does is it pinches off the blood vessels. Which are very tiny to begin with. And they don't. And so not having blood flow to the structures of your nose... So, like, let's take an example. If you found somebody on the ground and you felt their pulse and they had no pulse and they had no blood flow through their body, you would say that they are dead. Dead. So if you have no blood flow <laughs> through your nose and through the septum and the structures of the nose, they are dead. dead. Yeah. So with dead structures, things start to rot off. They do. But... They don't, doesn't happen right away. No. Like, it's not like you do the cocaine, you have the vasoconstriction effect. It's not, I mean, the, depending on how long you're doing cocaine for. Like, it's pretty short acting. So maybe you're doing it for a night or whatever. But like, the next day, you're not doing it anymore. And the vasoconstriction effect has worn off. And if you've done this intermittently here or there a few times over the course of your life, not a big deal. Hang on. For my kids, your nose will <laughs> fall off if you do cocaine. The okay? first time. Yeah, it's just right for, away. for my kids, <laughs> the second you do cocaine, your nose is going to rot off. It's going to die and you're going to need a full reconstruction. So don't do cocaine. Don't do cocaine. Okay. But, now but, we can talk about what actually but happens. But for everyone else. <laughs> but like for reals. Um, but it is the people who do a lot of cocaine over a long period of time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Typically, right? I, I will tell you that I have seen people who get so addicted, and, and I, I think of one case in, in my head of a 22-year-old college student, which, by the way, I don't know where she's getting the money for this, because, like, she probably put half a million dollars up her nose to do this to her nose, and, like, she snorted her nose off, and, you know, it does take time. Typically, it's a two-year three-year process of that nature of regular it can, steady years. it can yeah. be less it can be 
Yeah. You don't know, you know, you don't know how, like, especially for the people that like go on like these cocaine benders, you know, they, right. they go to, you know, and, and often when they're on cocaine, they're not just doing cocaine. They're, they're smoking meth or they're doing, they're doing other Ugh, stuff that's gross. also bad for you and bad for your tissues that they get a problem. And so ultimately what happens is typically the Cayumela dies. <laughs> well, first it starts well, first, in the septum. First it's the septum. The that's, septum goes that's away. The that's gone. classic <laughs> the, cocaine nose is the septum, that middle part of your nose that separates your nose into the right and left sides. The septum just rots away. There's just a gone. giant hole in it. You can like <laughs> whistle. You could like put, you know, run a train through it. <laughs> it's only whistles when it's small. Once they get bigger, it stops bigger, whistling. Exactly. So the whistling is a sign that it's tiny. <laughs> then when it gets bigger, you, you don't it's, have any whistling yeah. and you can pass a cheese sandwich between your yeah. nostrils if you'd like Basically. to. Yeah. So then after the septum goes, typically I'll see the side walls of the nose go, the sinuses. So then like when you look in, I did, this guy came in for a rhinoplasty. He's like, you know, I noticed my, my bridge is kind of falling down here and I have this hump and I was like, oh, well, you know, do you do anything? He's like, well, I do a little bit of cocaine. Uh, but he goes, but not not often. It's not a big deal. I look in and I see this like, like I could yodel into the cave. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know if you ever seen those like caving tours in Tennessee. You felt like you you like, you know, and yodel into this and just echo back at you <laughs> with this like huge. It was like, Ooh. oh, there are your eyeballs, and there's like your zygoma, and like, oh, over here you can see the other zygoma, and like, oh, I think I see a hole in the palate starting. Literally, Ooh. everything on the just inside was just empty. rotting away. Yeah, it was gone, That's and it rough. smelled like uh, like, like dead, dead animals. Dead you know, stuff. yeah, and there was dead things in there, and I was just like, dude, how much cocaine are you doing? He was like. Okay, I do a lot of cocaine. Okay. I was like, you're in a lot of trouble. Right. And, you know, it was it was awful. And, you know, I don't you know, you're you're an addict. These, you know, these these folks are addicts, so they don't they don't even like put put it into their brain that they could be really harming themselves. Right. Because it's it's hard to wrap your mind around yourself that your nose could just die. And as you alluded to, this patient who didn't have a septum or anything on the inside of the nose, he was noticing it on the outside because when there's nothing on the inside, when the septum has is gone, when it's collapsed, the outside of the nose starts to collapse. And that's when you notice that the nose is losing height. The bridge of the nose is sinking down. You can get what's called a saddle nose, which is when you get like a huge depression on the top of your nose. So now the problems that just seem like they were on the inside are now manifesting on the outside as an obvious collapse of the nose and and this isn't good this is no bueno <laughs> this is this is not good yeah now now you're in in a, a situation where there's a real problem you have a uh you, you just you have no structural integrity to the pyramid of the nose you know the that that uh cartilaginous middle vault uh, basically the part from the bones down to your tip the tip is gone it usually collapses in you lose your columella starts to die or dies off the and you have a una is yeah. that thing that separates the two nostrils and and the tip of your nose so when you lose that your tip just connects to your upper lip right and and it's just a, it's not a good look it's not a good look so let's talk about the treatment starting with what's considered to be the most um maybe easy or the early phase say you just have a septal perforation Right. Well, septal perforations can be closed. Let's say you just do, let's say you have a two centimeter perforation, which is pretty big. It's a large one. But it can be closed. Maybe you have a centimeter. So that can be closed. First of all, you have to stop using cocaine. Number one, number <laughs> one method of treatment. Stop. Put down the cocaine. <laughs> Step away from the white stuff, sir. Please. Step away. Um, by the way, it's men and women. This is, this oh. is, this. This addiction this knows is, no gender boundaries. I would say it's 50-50 on this one. Yeah. I think, I think that it's pretty much split, especially here. Yeah, For it sure. is. I mean, I, I, I've seen... I skew more towards women, I think, a little bit. Hard to say. I don't know. I see a lot of guys with it, too. Yeah, that's true. I think it's 50-50 yeah, in I my practice. I think it's 50-50. <clears throat> so, yeah, step away from the cocaine, first of all, and then seek treatment. And you can close the uh, the septal perforation with a... With basically, uh, there's a lot of techniques. You can use a flap. Um, you can use a, a flap of the actual normal tissue, which is the problem because w 
if there's a hole in the septum, the rest of the surrounding tissues have also been damaged. I was going to say, where are you going to find the normal tissue? Yeah, so it's not always great. You can use a piece of temporalis fascia, which is the lining of the temporalis muscle. On the side of the head, you make a small incision over the ear, get down on the temporalis muscle, uh, take the the lining of it, that fascia, and you can put it as a patch with uh, with the mucosal flap, which is also helpful. Um, you can use cartilage. Some people use composite ear cartilage with skin. Um, if things are terrible, you can use a temporalis muscle, you know, a, uh, a, a deep temporalis muscle flap. There's, you can do a free flap where you actually use like the radial forearm, uh, tissue and bring it up to the face and put in a flap. If you have to rebuild the septum for whatever reason, if you need lining of the nose, um, but there's a lot you can do to close the septal perf. Um, not great success in cocaine noses. But the, the question that I have, so, the, so say you don't have a cocaine nose, maybe you have a septal perforation for some other reason. From trauma. From trauma. Common. You can go around with a septal perforation, and especially if it is large enough, it doesn't actually cause you any problems. No. You just live your whole life with that septal perforation. But for these patients, it's everything else. It's not like it's just this isolated perforation. It That is a symptom of everything else. So you're not just fixing a septum in isolation. You're usually rebuilding the structure of the nose, right? Correct. Yeah, right. for sure. Because the septum itself is collapsing. It's not that there's just an isolated hole in it. The structure itself is falling in. No, and once, once you get to that point where you get a saddle nose, now you need a rib graft to... Uh, reconstruct the middle vault and the septal L strut, which is usually what I do. And, and there's a great video. I did a case like this on uh, the doctor's TV show, and they really covered it quite well. Hmm. It's on uh, my YouTube channel, Dr. Calvert TV. Uh, and it was on the doctor's like back in the Disney. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking a long time ago. Back when cocaine was having a moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was like, hello. Um, and I reconstructed this nose on that show, and it shows all the things I did. You know, dorsal uh, struts with uh, rib cartilage, a caudal septal reconstruction graft, the tip reconstruction I hooked onto that dorsal recon graft because there was no lining. So there was no place, I, I couldn't really make a separate strut or anything, so the, the tip is actually hooked to the septal reconstruction, which is fine. Um, big lateral curl strut grafts, middle vault, I reconstructed the uh, upper lateral cartilages, the whole thing and and it it looked pretty dang good and it held up very well until what's the biggest problem with cocaine nose so she snorts it away again it gets snorted <laughs> again i'm sorry it is the hugest problem is relapse and i don't want to say it's a hundred percent because it's not a hundred percent i know of one person that did not relapse um but most of them relapse i mean if you've been doing that much cocaine to get you to the point where you need this level of reconstruction is definitely an addiction. It's not just something you can, you know, put down and be done with it. So and addictions die hard. You know, yeah. they're, they're really hard to beat. And, uh, you know, this is not that you can't beat it. You can. You just have to stay focused. You know, I'm not an addiction expert. I, I fix these noses. But part of my treatment for them is to say, are you done? Because I'm not going to do this right. so that we can do it again. It's just like boxers. Like I get a lot of boxers that come and say, oh, I'm done with my career. I'm like, are you sure? Because if I fix this nose and you go box, like we've blown it. Right. We've lost our shot. And this is sort of the same thing with cocaine nose. It's like, okay, I'm going to fix it, but you can't go snort again and ruin it again. But you've just given them a brand new nose to snort through. That's a good point. <laughs> Maybe that's kind why they relapse. You, you like, know? Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's give this, this a shot. This one's pretty sturdy. <laughs> yeah, it, it does hold up to a point. Yeah, you can't you can't beat it up. But yeah, the reconstruction is very you know methodical, and it has it's different for every patient. It depends whether they have a columella or don't have a columella. It depends whether they have cartilage or no cartilage. If they have nasal bones or no bones or septum. Um, what is the worst case scenario? So if like a, a septal perforation is like the beginning and like on like the minor side of, of problems and then you progress, maybe you have a saddle nose and you're losing the support. What's like worst case scenario of this? Well, the worst case scenario is you do all this stuff um, and, and we haven't talked about forehead flaps because that's a big part of this too where we use the forehead skin as a flap to turn down and make 
not just the tip, but also usually nostrils, lining, etc. So these um, are people that have actually lost the tip of the nose. They've lost the tip. They've lost the columella. Um, I'm working on one now that's that way that uh, it's lost part of the uh, nostril, the tip of the nose, and the columella. And the first thing I'm going to do is the forehead flap. So we're, we're coming up on that very shortly. So what do, what do these people, so that our visual our listeners can visualize, what do these noses look like on the outside once they've progressed to this sort of end stage? It's like a shriveled up, like, so it looks like, um, if you can imagine, like a skeleton from Halloween with the bone sitting there and then draped over the hole in the face is like the remnants of a nose. It looks, mm. looks like a raisin of a nose. Oof. Like somebody, you know, flattened it and stepped on it and then you know used harsh language with it and <laughs> told dried it, it dried to, it in the sun <laughs> and dried it in the sun <laughs> and then stuck it back on your face oh not cute it's not a good look no it's not and and they don't work you can't breathe through them um so it's pretty awful it's an awful situation and i you know i can tell you that the biggest problem is that you have to stop the cocaine it, it is just you cannot take on these reconstructions as a patient. Never mind my, I mean, I'm a surgeon. I, I operate. I'll operate. If you snort it off, that is your problem. I get it. But you, you shouldn't approach this project until you really feel like you've kind of got the addiction under yeah. control or beaten it. Uh, and, and people want it because they don't like walking around with this, you know, freaky looking nose. It's terrible. Right. That's I mean, just, it doesn't look normal. And it, right. it is... You know, my, my goal with a lot of my reconstructive work, never mind my, my cosmetic surgery, which is the bulk of what I do, but my reconstructive work, my goal is to get them supermarket ready so that when they go to the supermarket, people look around, they don't look stop on their nose. Well, people stop on the cocaine nose. It, it, is, a, it is a deformity, and it's awful, and it is eye-catching, and it, it saps your confidence, and, and it, it's... It's really horrible for right. for my patients. I mean, I, I feel for them. Like yeah, I, it's I hard get, to walk around. It's terrible. Like I mean, I, you know, all you know, joking aside or whatever. But you know, cocaine's serious business, and and the amount of money that it takes to get that far down the road, and how much they've blown, and what they've lost, and the family issues. Like, there's so much more to this that w then we're you know kind of passing over just in the the you know for the sake of the podcast of to understand that this is a thing that's out there. Right. It is devastating for for somebody to get to this point. Right. Because, I mean, there are, obviously, like you said, some people that can get there in one or two years. But usually this is over a longer period of time and fairly regular chronic use. So, and how much money that yeah, went up your nose? That is a lot of, lot like, of money. Never mind, like... Uh, a down payment on a house or, or a mortgage <laughs> or, or a new house in general. Right. right. Yeah, or, that's a lot of money or, you know, several nose. cars or, you know, college education or whatever. It, it is a lot of money that has destructively interfered with your life. And now you're shelling out a lot more money to get it fixed because this is not cheap. No, it's not And this cheap. is not covered by insurance for most people because the level of you know, skill and knowledge that you need to reconstruct these nodes you usually can't find through your typical run-of-the-mill in-network insurance provider. No, I mean, people don't do this. I, I, I mean, I do because it's kind of part of my... What you do. Rhinoplasty, right. nasal reconstruction, revision rhinoplasty world is being able to build a nose from scratch. So I do that for cancer. I do it for trauma. I do it for bizarre disease processes, autoimmune diseases. So what does it cost to build a nose? Well, I'm, I just kind of like, I don't want to say like dollar values. Let's do it in terms of X. And let's call a primary rhinoplasty costs X. X. And a revision rhinoplasty costs... 2X. 2X, right? Yeah. In general? Yeah. What does it cost to build a nose, which typically, let's say it's no columella, loss of the tip and no septum, and they're going to need how many operations? Four. Typically four. Four. Maybe a little small revision, four and a half. Yeah. I, that's about right. It can be done in three. It can't be done in two in my nope. world. I, I, I'm sure there's a... I mean, you can slap something together, but it's not going to look like a nose. So to get a nose, let's say it's four to five operations. So rhinoplasty X, revision rhinoplasty is 2X. 
what does it cost to get a nose? You have four operations. So let's say it was just four rhinoplasties. It's at least 4X. Well, it's four revision rhinoplasties, though. So then... <laughs> it's 8X. That's 8X, <laughs> if you really want to think about it. It's 8X. Right? Yeah. Eight so, primary rhinoplasties. So if that's how you want to think about it, you're talking about people looking at this, and if they're, if a, if in your neighborhood a primary rhinoplasty is $8,000... I mean, sorry, is is ten thousand dollars, and you're talking about eighty thousand dollars to rebuild the nose. Primary and rhinoplasty here is more expensive. Lower. Spectrum. That's that's it, where well, there are places where primary rhinoplasty is eight thousand dollars. Right yeah, now. but that's like I said, that's a lower spectrum of yeah. prices. So imagine that's if not you're Beverly Hills. in a place that has higher prices, you're looking at certainly a lot more. Yeah, I mean, uh, my primary rhinoplasties here are are double plus that. So you're talking about a ton of money. It's a ton of money and a ton of work, and it's hard. And it takes yeah. effort on both the surgeon's part and the patient's part. And it has to be a collaborative effort. And I had, I swear, I'm not, this is like, this story makes me sick. I had this one patient. I did this beautiful forehead flap for her. She came back about third week. We were getting ready to divide it. Mm -hmm. And I was just checking on her to make sure it was cool. And the business end of the flap was dead. Dead as a hammer. It was mm. black. I was like, it looked great last week. What happened? So she has this big forehead flap. And when you have a forehead flap, it means you take the skin of the forehead, you turn it down onto the tip of the nose, it stays attached. It looks like a bucket handle on your face. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, my patients get used to. You know, we did our trauma guy with his yep. nose bitten off from a dog. And yep. he, he walked around, he went to the store. Yeah. He, he was like, eh, you know, I'm just used to it. <laughs> <coughs> so people go out and do things. My patient decided to go to a party oh my gosh with her new forehead flap oh and her newly minted nostrils and cocaine past the forehead flap and oh. what do you think happened that thing died like a dog oh dead as a hammer oh and i said <clears throat> she didn't tell me that i go why is this thing dead i go well we have to debride it I said, well, let's get pre-op labs. She goes, didn't I just have labs? I was like, let's get them anyway. A tester or cocaine. Which, by the way, sits in your system for like two, three days max. Yeah. So if you did cocaine fresh. a week ago, it wouldn't show up <laughs> in your system. <laughs> so she was still using it. Past her forehead flap. And I was like, I, I don't know what even to do here because it's like the, you've killed this thing. That is a level of commitment to go out to no, a, it's a party level of addiction. with your forehead flap. I mean, I personally think I'd probably just stay in the house for a few months, but like to go to a party and then, oh, wow, that is, that is rough. Addiction is powerful. And that says it all. You're sitting there with a forehead flap on your face because you snorted your nose off having paid X amount. 8X. Uh, yes. And you are snorting cocaine oh. past your forehead flap, which hasn't even been divided yet. That's how strong the addiction is. So what happened to that the forehead flap? It died. It died. It I, died. I, I, I debrided the columella. The tip lived. I built a nose with a uni nostril, and she lived happily ever after. I, that's all I could do. She's like, well, can we do another one? I was like, I, 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 mm. I, I can't. I mean, like, why would you do that? Like, what if you have more problems? And now she, and she, she already has one big scar on her forehead. Then you'd have another big scar on your forehead. Like, But it's not that. She can't beat the addiction. So yeah. it's like, I, I can't, in good conscience, take your money and do another one knowing that you haven't beaten this. Right. So I told her, go for two years or whatever. And then she, like, kind of, I think she did get over it eventually, but she kind of also got used to her uninostral nose, which she could breathe through, and it didn't look bad. And so all in all, she was reconstructed. And maybe it was that that it took her to get off cocaine. Yeah. I mean, like, do do the math. Like, you're sitting there with your quote unquote friends <laughs> at a party. They're like, sure, do some. Watching you snort cocaine Through past your, your forehead, forehead flap, flap that you you're using to rebuild the nose that you killed with cocaine. If that doesn't tell you the power of those drugs, nothing will, because that is how powerful that addiction is. Yeah, no, that's true. And it sucks. And I, f I feel for my patients who have that level of addiction. It, it is awful. It's yeah. awful. No, and it for sure is. Well, that's cheery. Um. 
that's true. On that, on that but I think happy people note. should know about this. Oh, and no, it's You know awful. what? It, it, when people are like, oh, you know, it's just a little cocaine. It's not. It's not just a little. It's a, it's a window to destruction. You know, I, I think I, we talked about this earlier. You know, back in the 80s when they had those commercials on TV with the broken egg and it was like, this is your egg, this is your brain. And then like they fry it and this is your brain on drugs. We should have one where it's like, This is your nose. <laughs> this is your nose. And then show another picture of like a forehead <laughs> flap with a bucket handle. This is your nose on cocaine. Totally. Because I think it would resonate. It's like those commercials with the people um, who are smoking and they show them like later on with like, you know, a, a tracheostomy and yeah. everything. And they're like, this is what happens when you smoke. Like sometimes you need that visual in your mind to maybe, you know, kids don't do cocaine. I know, I know, but it's like you want to, it's like, can you scare people into not using, I mean, can you? I don't know that you can. I, th I think a certain subset maybe can be scared, but they're probably the same subset that wouldn't go to that lengths of extremes anyways. Right, because the addiction is like right. a, it's a serotonin brain thing right. that, you know, it's like, I'm going to press this button. I'm going to, oh, that feels good. Oh, I'm going to press this button. It right. feels good. I'm going to press this button. Oh, that feels good. Oh, I'm going to press this button. I'm going to do it. And now I don't have a nose. You know, it's, it's scary. And I, I, I'm spending time on it in the hopes that anybody who's listening to this that is thinking about doing this reconstruction or is getting there because of their addiction will take action. We'll yeah. get help. We'll, we'll call the local addiction treatment center. We'll go to their primary doctor, you know, go, you know, confess to their priest something mm -hmm. somewhere where somebody can you know take them you know by the hair and pull them into right. sanity you know because it is it's awful and i just i've seen it too many times i mean we've all seen addicts of something somewhere in some way it's affected everybody addiction's a, a, a problem but this one you know has has a special meaning to me because i just you know you know it's like when you operate on somebody you really you kind of you, you understand them. You get to know where they are. And, right. you, know, you kind of feel their pain, too. Right. You get like, invested in them. You do. You feel that, like, when I'm reconstructing these noses, I, I, f like I feel the pain that they are snuffing with that addiction, the, right. whatever it is. And because they're sitting there with this wrecked nose. Like, what does it take to go that far? You know, it's bad. Yeah. But they can be reconstructed. Take home message. They can. It's, uh, it's work yes. for everyone. But it can be done. It can be done, and it can look great. Um, I urge everybody to take a look at that um, that YouTube channel that uh, when I was on the doctors, uh, that case was real. They they really did a good job putting it together. The producers did a nice job, and uh, I have a couple more that are in the in the hopper to to put up on the YouTube channel. So uh, just subscribe, you know, subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This way, you won't miss this stuff when it comes up. Sounds good. Anything else about cocaine nose, Doctor Ravello? Just don't do it. <laughs> step, step away from the white lines. <laughs> don't, don't go down that road. Yeah, I think uh, that's really the take-home message. Well, in that case, this is the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast coming to you from the 90210.